In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to special journals. First question, which of the following journals are used to record adjusting entries? A, general journal, B, cash receipts journal, C, cash disbursements journal, D, purchases journal, or E, sales journal. One more time, we'll read through these and see if we can cross them out with the process of elimination. Which of the following journals are used to record adjusting entries? Before we do so, let's just take a quick look and say, okay, what are adjusting entries? Uh, notice those adjusting entries are the ones that happen after we have done the normal journal entries throughout the process. If we are using special journals as we are here, then you can imagine that we're doing the day-to-day -day transactions, entering the information into these special journals and then recording those to the general journal at the end of the time period and then posting them to the general ledger and creating the financial statements uh, from this information. So if we go through here, uh, and then after, after that, then <laughs> we would take the, the trial balance, the unadjusted trial balance, and put those adjusting entries in, those adjusting entries being the things that are going to be uh, making our financial statements more on an accrual basis. And we would be using the adjusting entries in a similar fashion, whether we be using a, uh, a system that just has journal entries or a system that has special journals. So A says the general journal. Now the general journal is like that default journal that we use when we can't fit something into any other type of journal. So I'm going to keep that there for now because uh, the adjusting entries isn't a normal type of journal entry process. It's at the end of the time period. So we'll keep that there for now. B says cash receipts journal. Now the adjusting entries, again, they're not something that happened during the time period. And the cash receipts journal is usually what we do when we do the normal data input throughout the time period and it has cash in it and the adjusting entries typically don't have cash involved because cash isn't something that we typically uh, have to do a timing adjustment for at the end so i'm going to say that's not it c says cash disbursements journal same reasoning there the cash disbursements journal is used as we go through the process and cash isn't even involved typically in most of the adjusting entries that we we think of so i'm going to say it's not that one purchases journal Purchases journal is what we do throughout the time process. It's fairly specific. It means that we're going to be crediting accounts payable and debiting some other account, possibly inventory or supplies or something like that for most of the purchases. But uh, the adjusting entry doesn't necessarily fall into that. We might adjust uh, an accounts payable account uh, in the adjusting process, but it doesn't seem that's going to be the case because because once again, that's during the normal journal entry process the purchase journal is used for and we are in the in the adjusting process the sales journal also a very specific journal debiting accounts receivable and crediting sales but that's the normal journal entry not really the adjusting journal entry we're going to need so we might have you know one journal entry that could fit into that kind of format in the adjusting process but we're probably not going to use the sales journal because that's used during the the month not at the adjusting entry process at the end of it so I think we're left with just the general journal, the default journal, the journal we use when, you know, the, the, the transactions don't fit into any other account. And that's the nature of the adjusting entries. Even if we're not using special journals, the, the problem with them are that we set up the system so that we need these kind of funny adjustments at the end, adjustments that aren't normal things that we do throughout the process and therefore don't have a normal kind of uh, special journal that we can set up for them. So we're going to say the uh, general journal. Once again, the question and answer. Which of the following journals are used to record adjusting entries? A, general journal. Next question. Pays payroll with cash. What journal is used? So pays, I think it should be pay payroll with cash. So we're going to pay payroll with cash. What journal are we using? A, cash disbursements journal. B, sales journal. C, cash receipts journal d purchases journal or e general journal again uh we'll read through this see if we can cross some of these out with the process of elimination pays payroll with cash what journal is used a cash disbursements journal now that's going to be a special journal that we will have uh, when we disperse or pay cash and so that looks reasonable it looks like we are paying cash for payroll so i'm going to i'm going to keep that one for now B says sales journal. That's a specific journal relating to 
making sales on account. So that'd be uh, uh, no cash involved in this journal and it's a sales transaction. Therefore, it doesn't look like it's going to be there for payroll. C says cash receipts journal. Now, the cash receipts journal would be used when we get the cash, not when the employee gets the cash. We are paying cash here, so uh, it shouldn't be in the cash receipts journal because the cash is going out. And then D says the purchases journal. A purchases journal, we're kind of purchasing something. We're purchasing labor in a way. Uh, but really, purchases journal is usually when we purchase something like inventory, and it deals with accounts payable. It's really the accounts payable journal. So it's not going to be the purchases journal. And then the general journal is kind of like the default. If we can't find another location for it, we use the general journal. So I'll keep that for now. I'm going to leave it with A and E, cash disbursement journal and general journal, and read through it one more time. Cash payroll with, <laughs> pays payroll with cash. What journal is used? A, cash disbursements journal, or E, the general journal. Now, I think of the two, the, the, I think it can fit into the cash disbursements journal. We're going to run payroll and, uh, we can say that we're, if we're paying it with cash, then cash, anytime cash goes out, we can use basically the cash disbursement journal to, to cover that. So um, the general journal would be there if in no other journal was appropriate. Uh, it may not be the first type of transaction we would think of for the cash payment journal, but I think it would work. So I'm going to go with A. And the answer then is pays payroll with cash. What journal is used? A cash disbursements journal. Next question. Which of the following journals would a company use to record a merchandise return? A general journal. B cash receipts journal. C cash disbursements journal. D purchases journal. E sales journal. Okay, we're going to read through this one more time, try to think through it a bit, and then we'll, and then we'll look at our answers again. So which of the following journals would a company use to record a merchandise return? Now this is, this is going to be one of uh, a little bit more confusing one because we have to first kind of, it's not a, a normal transaction. So we might first want to think about what, what was the merchandise uh, purchase type of activity and then the return of it. Another thing that's not entirely clear here is, whether uh, we are returning the merchandise or the um, customers returning the merchandise to us. So let's first, let's think of both those scenarios in any case. And if we say, if we, if we say, well, okay, we're returning merchandise. Well, if we bought the merchandise on account, it would have been accounts received, uh, uh, it would have been inventory is debited. And then we would have had the credit go to accounts payable. And if we returned it, then accounts payable should be going down with a debit and inventory should be going down with a credit because we gave it back away. Now, if someone, on the other hand, if we were <laughs> uh, returning merchandise to us that we sold, when we sold the merchandise, we would have had a uh, debit to accounts receivable for the IOU and a credit to the sales. And then if they return it, we'd also have cost of goods sold and inventory, but I won't think about that now. I think we're actually dealing with this transaction up here, but in any case, if they returned it, then we would reverse this and say that it would be sales return and allowance would be debit and we credit AR. So in any of these cases, would do any of these fit into these journals? The first one says the general journal. Now, if we can't find a place for these, we're going to go to the general journal. I'm basically looking at this transaction mainly. I think that's the one they're asking about or possibly this transaction, depending on if we're the seller or the purchaser. Then B says purchase receipts journal. Now, the purchase receipts journal um, or the cash receipts journal means that we there's cash affected. We got cash. And you can see there's no cash involved here because we're assuming we made the sale on account. So it can't be that. And that's what the, and again, that's an assumption we're making, but that's typically. Then C, cash disbursements journal. Again, cash is involved and there's no cash involved here. So that doesn't look like it. Purchases journal. That's what we purchased the, the inventory. And that would be up here when we purchased it. But now we're returning it. 
And so it's not going to fit in the purchase journals anymore. Uh, so it's got the same accounts, but they go in the wrong way because uh, the purchase journal would be would be um, a debit to inventory and a credit to accounts payable. You can't use the same journal going the other way. So and then the sales journal, that would be this one here when we make the sale. But again, if they were talking about uh, someone returning an inventory to us, it wouldn't fit in that journal because again, it would be going the wrong way. So it can't be there. So w whether we're talking about us being the purchaser or the seller, it de the return doesn't fit in into any normal journal. So we would have to put in the default journal, that being the general journal. So once again, which of the following journals would a company use to record a merchandise return? A general journal.